The Greedy Jeweler In very young age, due to an accident, Girish got separated from his family. There was no one to look after him. But as they say, God is always with those who has no body. Something like this happened with Girish. One day he was going somewhere alone. On the way, there was a dense mango tree. It's so hot today. For some time, I shall rest in shadow of this tree. Girish slept in cool shadow of that tree to have some rest. He was very hungry, but didn't have any money to buy food. He thought, to satisfy his hunger, today he shall eat mangoes of this tree. I am so hungry. Before sleeping, I shall eat some mangoes. As soon as he picked up a stone to break a mango, he heard someone's voice. Wait! Please don't hit us! Grish looked around and he found no one was there. Then he saw a little sparrow. He didn't believe that the voice he heard is of this sparrow. But then the sparrow spoke again. My nest will be destroyed if you hit us with the stone. I'm very hungry. That's why I want to eat a mango. But you need not worry. It's fine. I won't hit you ever. I will make some other arrangement. By seeing Grisha's kindness, Paro said, You are so kind. Wait for some time. I'll be right back. Sparrow flew and went somewhere. Came back after some time. There was a shining pearl in her mouth. She gave that pearl to Garish and said, You will earn a good amount by selling this pearl in the market. And with that money, you can eat whatever you want to. Thank you, sweet sparrow. With this, I will make arrangement for my food today. Not only today, I will give you a pearl every day. And in return, you protect my nest from people crossing by. Grish happily agreed to hearing Sparrow's offer. He went to the village and sold the pearl to a jeweler and got some money in return. He ate well with that money. Now every day, Grish went near that tree and stopped people from throwing stones at Sparrow's tree and used to protect her nest. Now every day Sparrow gave a pearl to Garish, and Garish, after selling it to the jeweler used to make arrangement for his meal. Those pearls were very precious. One day the jeweler thought, this boy must have some sort of treasure. I shall find out where they're coming from. The jeweler followed Garish and came to know about everything. Hmm, so this is the matter. Treasure is there with this sparrow. Tomorrow I will chase this sparrow. Next day, the jeweler followed this sparrow. He ran after her. He saw the sparrow going into the hole of a tree and coming back with a pearl. Oh, the treasure's here. When sparrow went away, the jeweler went near the tree and put his hand inside the hole to take the pearl out of the tree. But within a matter of seconds, the jeweler screamed and ran away from there. Ah! Someone please help me! Snake has bitten me! Someone please help! Ah! 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 A snake, who was friend of the sparrow, resided in that tree and he every day gave a pearl to the sparrow. There was no treasure there. After hearing screaming of Jula, Grish came near him, picked up an herbal leaf, rubbed on the wounded portion of Jula's hand and said, Uncle, with the help of this herbal leaf, you will be cured soon. Poison's effect faded soon, and the jeweler was saved. The jeweler told everything to Grish, and asked for forgiveness. Please forgive me. Out of greed, I followed you and ran into trouble. It's fine, uncle. 
Your life is more important to me than anything. You are such a good boy. From today onwards, you come to my house and live with me. From that moment, the jeweler kept Girish with him and took responsibility to look after him. The kindness of Girish eradicated all his troubles and the jeweler also learned the lesson to not be greedy. The story of expensive rice. A long time ago, seven years old Chinky and eight year old Gatu lived with their parents in a city. Apart from them, their grandfather also lived with them. Before going to the school every day, their grandfather used to teach them a lesson. We should never bow down in front of whatever that's wrong, so that it may never do wrong with anyone ever. All right, Grandpa, we, we shall should always remember this for sure. Saying this, they both left for the school. After some time, their mother, after finishing all the household work, went near the grandfather and said, Daddy, I have to go to the market now. All right. The shop has so many items. Today I shall purchase grocery from here. Shopkeeper looked at her and said, Come madam, you are most welcome in my new shop. So tell, what would you like to purchase? Give me 5 kgs of good quality rice. All right, I shall quickly arrange 5 kilograms of good quality rice for you. Take this. After reaching home, when she opened the bag to take out the rice, she was surprised. There are so many pebbles in this rice. It seems like the shopkeeper has given me this by mistake. Thinking this, she picked up the bag and again went to that shop. Mr. Shopkeeper, these rice have so many pebbles in it. No, no. I gave you 5 kilograms of good quality rice. But your rice has so many small pebbles. I sell rice only. Do not sell pebbles. No idea from where you got these pebbles. She became very upset by his behavior. But she didn't say anything to the shopkeeper and quietly came back to her house. The grandfather noticed that she was upset. Then he asked, What happened, child? That shopkeeper gave me rice full of pebbles and he isn't ready to accept any fault of his. Right then, Gatu and Chinky also came back from school. What happened, Grandpa? The grandfather told him everything. After hearing everything, Chinky said, Grandpa, we should teach that shopkeeper a lesson. Yes, Grandpa, you taught us in the morning that we should never bow down before anything that's wrong. I agree with you, my children. But after all, what can we do to teach that person a lesson? I have a brilliant idea. And according to the plan, Grandpa also went to the shop and said, Will you please give me 5 kilograms of good quality rice? The shopkeeper gave him 5 kgs of rice full of pebbles in a bag. And after some time, Gatu went to the shop. Uncle, give me 3 kilograms of good quality rice. The shopkeeper handed rice full of pebbles to Gatu also. Gatu picked the bag and went from there. And after some time, Chinky also came to the shop. Uncle, please give me two kgs of good quality rice. Oh no, there are no pebbles left now. Seems I have to give her unmixed rice now. Thinking this, the shopkeeper gave Chinky two kgs of rice in a bag. On opening the bag, Chinky found that there was only rice in it. And on this, she said to the shopkeeper, No, uncle, I need that good quality rice only, which you gave to my mother, my brother, and to my grandfather. On hearing this, the shopkeeper surprisingly said, Oh, oh, that rice? But those were mixed with... We know that those rice were mixed with pebbles. Still, you want that only? Yes, uncle. First, you have to tell me. 
that why you want those rice mixed with pebbles. The reason is that my grandfather told me that those pebbles were very expensive. Therefore, in the big market, he will sell those pebbles threefold the price to a big jewelry shop owner. What? Threefold? Yes, uncle, threefold. But those are my pebbles. How can your grandfather do this? But now you've already sold them to us. Haven't sold them. By mistake, I gave them along with the rice. Therefore, they are mine. But... No if and but now. The amount of rice which I gave to your grandfather, mother and brother sums up to about 23 kilograms. In return, I will give 30 kilograms of good rice to you. Alright. If you're insisting so much, then we'll return your rice mixed with pebbles. Hey, grandfather, take them. Your 30 kilograms of good quality rice. Now please return my expensive rice mixed with pebbles to me. Alright. The shopkeeper picked up the bag filled with rice and pebbles and he left from there. He took the bag and straight away went to the jewelry shop in the market. Hello sir, take this. I have come up with a bag full of expensive pebbles for you. Now please quickly hand over my money to me. On opening the bag, the jeweler laughed loudly. <laughs> Expensive stones. These are very ordinary stones. For them I shall not give you even a single penny. <laughs> On hearing this, the shopkeeper became very upset. He understood that just like he used to fool others, today he has been fooled himself. And then he decided that... From now on I will never fool anyone ever. So children... With this story, we learn that if someone cheats us, then we shall surely teach him a lesson so that he will never cheat anybody else. Baby's Makeup A very long time ago, there lived a family in a city. A seven-year-old named Baby used to live with her parents. Baby's mother was very beautiful and she used to do wonderful makeup too. Baby was very fond of her mother's makeup. While seeing her mother, she always used to think that I will look so pretty in the makeup. Once she told to her mother, Mom, I want to apply makeup just like you. Mother became angry after hearing her words and scolded her. Baby, makeup is meant for elders. Therefore, you won't apply it till you grow up. Baby listened and agreed to her mother's word. But her focus was on her mother's makeup. One day, in school too, the class teacher told the students, Tomorrow there is a parents teacher meeting in school. Therefore all of you will come along with your parents. I will hand over the report of your studies to your parents. Baby was happy with teacher's words. Tomorrow I'll come to school with my mother. Happily she came to her house and told about parents teacher meeting to her mother. Mom, parent teacher meeting is there in school tomorrow. And therefore you have to go to the school with me tomorrow. The teacher will give you reports of my studies. Okay, baby. I will come with you to your school tomorrow. I expect teacher will not complain against you. I oh, know, mom. The teacher will not complain against me. Next day, baby got ready in morning and went to mother's room. Mom, are you ready? Yes, baby. I'm just getting ready. Saying this, in front of the dressing table, her mother started applying makeup. And as always, happily, baby kept watching her mother. After applying her makeup, her mother picked her handbag and they both went for school. After reaching there, as soon as mom and baby stepped inside the classroom, all students thought her mother to be a teacher and wished her good morning. Good morning, teacher! Good morning, teacher. Good morning, teacher. I suppose everyone's thinking as if my mom is a teacher. After all, my mom is looking so beautiful. As soon as they stepped forward, another mother with her child came near them. 
and said to baby's mother, Teacher, I am Bunty's mother. I have to make a complaint against him. Baby's mother stopped her and said, No, I am not a teacher over here. Like you, I also came to have report about my child. Oh, you are looking so pretty in your makeup, therefore I thought you must be a teacher. Saying this, Bunty's mother went outside the classroom. Baby was very happy after listening about her mother. And then Baby, accompanied by her mother, went to her teacher. Teacher also loved her mother's makeup very much. And she also started talking about her makeup. Baby's mother, you're looking so pretty in this makeup. Thank you. And she forgot to talk about Baby's reports. And then Baby reminded her. Teacher, you forgot to give reports to my mother. Oh yes, I forgot. I shall give you reports of her studies to you. After that, the teacher gave reports to her mother and they came back home. After listening to so many praises about her mother's beauty, baby wasn't able to keep herself calm. Now by applying makeup, I have to be as beautiful as my mother. After saying this, baby started thinking and then she had an idea. Idea! I will secretly apply my mother's makeup and then surprise her by showing her my beautiful made-up face. Thinking this, she came out of her room. She saw her mother was working in the kitchen. Crossing the stairs, she went to her mother's room. Mom keeps her makeup box in drawer of her dressing table. She opened the drawer and took makeup box out of it. Today, I will also apply makeup like my mom. And then, she started applying the makeup. One by one, she applied lipstick, nail polish, foundation on her face. And in the meantime, she saw lamp black in her mother's makeup box. Lamp black is mom's favorite. Mom applies it every day on her face. I should also apply it. But while applying by mistake instead of eyelashes, lamp black went into her eyes and she started having burning sensation in her eyes. Oh, my eyes! Lamp black got into my eyes! She ran towards the bathroom and washed her eyes with water. With this, lamp black along with other makeup spread on her face and went into her eyes. Due to burning sensation in her eyes, she started crying loudly. Oh, oh, my eyes! Mom, my eyes are burning a lot! <laughs> After hearing her crying, her mom came near her. By watching makeup on her baby's face, she asked her surprisingly, What happened to your face, baby? <laughs> I was applying makeup on my face just like you! <laughs> Haven't I said you to stay away from the makeup? Sorry, Mom. All I wanted to do is surprise you. After watching her condition, her mother first wiped her face and then cleaned her eyes properly. Then explained her and said, Baby, makeup is meant for only elders. Kids like you have a very sensitive skin. And makeup has a lot of chemical which can damage skin of children. That's why I always asked you to stay away from makeup. And applying makeup requires a lot of practice. Without practicing, this kind of things happens. Finally, baby understood why her mother warned her always to stay away from makeup. She said to her mother, I understood, mom. Now I will apply makeup when I will grow up and that too after practicing. This way, Baby understood an important lesson on makeup. So kids, the moral of this story is that skin of children is very sensitive and therefore they shouldn't apply makeup and after growing up too, should practice thoroughly before applying makeup.